good morning and welcome to today's video. A couple of things on the agenda today. Starting off with a gravel ride. Well, I'm on the gravel bike at least. I'm meeting Robert McCarthy today. He rides for the latest incarnation of my old race team, Canyon DHB. He's probably gonna tear my legs off. And then I've got a bike fit. Try to resolve this IT band issue. Just heading to the park now. Gonna meet up with Robert and it started raining. Love it. Nice to meet you, How dude. You? I'm nice good, I'm good. Answer. We're gonna do an off-road route London to Brighton, but not London to Brighton. I just got a route on my thing. Yeah, we're gonna go down as far as we feel like and then turn around and find another way back, so. So just five minutes down the road, yeah? Maybe, mate. We'll see, we'll see if it rains again, maybe. <laughs> nah, maybe four hours, four hours should we get around. Let's do it. Yeah. How many pro cyclists does it take? <laughs> Should have gone tubeless, mate. I'm trying to work to a cadence of around 90. You need those 14 year old teenage boy arms. Welcome to the GCN show. I bet this doesn't happen on GCN. I bet they've just got a fucking car behind them. They've got someone with a track on there. <laughs> Aren't you used to like neutral service? Yeah, not really. Um, don't puncture that much with our uh, tubeless tyre system. Ah, uh, yeah. Fuck <laughs> you. Pro bike tool. Yeah. Better than Lazine, I heard. Yeah, definitely. Hmm. Proven, just you've just proven it. Yeah. Tubelito. Yeah, one of those in there. Yeah, little tubelito. Tubelito, it's uh, in a tube and a piece of Mexican food as well. Yeah. You can get it at Tortilla. There you go. All sorted, really good. 30 second punch of a pair. Yeah. That's how you do it. <laughs> get the chain back on. That was impressive, man. That was speed. Thanks. That's the way I like it. Always keep it classic. Dazzle like a sapphire. This is nice. Yeah, just trust local Rob for the local routes. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I'll get you on the, the secret gravel gravel routes around uh, London because just because you're local. Just local. Yeah. Chopper. Yeah. Wow. Helicopter. Helicopter. This Lawrence can't put his drone. Yeah. Is that Lawrence's drone? Yeah. He's got <laughs> is that a drone club. He's one up me. Yeah. <laughs> right, so Francis is punctured again. Um, no tubeless. So you see, when are you going to tubeless her up? See, the thing is, we were touting tubulitos and I didn't we actually, lied. We, I didn't we, we actually lied. put a tubulito in. It's and a normal tube. I've got, it's a normal tube, look. But now he's going to put a tubulito in yeah. and in his tyre, not in his belly. But and then I won't ever get another puncher again. Yeah. Good route so far, Francis. Oh, mate, it's been so good. So it went down really quick. I don't know if I hit a thorn or something. I reckon it must have been a thorn or a hardly big, pinched it. Nothing in there. Yeah, so that is like the worst one you can't find, whatever it was. Is that like a cork accent? Tubulito. Tubulito is weird. Tubulito is I'm weird. I'm gonna make a balloon animal out of it. <laughs> Tubulito is not easy getting, fucking, is it? That's so fucking slippery. <laughs> oh no. Oh. Hello, boy. Oh You'll not God. believe him how... That is like 20 dogs. There was literally 20 dogs coming towards us, man. That was so cool. Oh my goodness. Oh, well, hello. There's 20 of them. No, it's not that many. Have you counted them? No. <laughs> He's a good fella. So that's the sort of thing you don't see when you ride on the road. Gravel riding is where it's at, mate. You Gravel get to riding. see packs of like 20 dogs. It's the great. Biggest, the biggest pack of dogs I've ever seen in my whole life. I did that puncher on purpose. Yeah. Plug. Plug. How are you? Good, how are you? Yeah, right. We introduced your video yet today. Yeah. So what races you got coming up? Tour of Yorkshire and then, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Tour of Yorkshire next week. That's quite a big race. Big race, yeah. So I got fifth on the stage last year, so hopefully you can go better than fifth on the stage this year. And then the week after that, three days after it actually, got an Alpine stage race called Roan Alps Tour. And then the Tour Series the week after that, so a fair old mix of- pretty uh, Yeah, yeah, a fair old mix. Are you yeah. going to be taking it easy this week to sort of taper before the Tour of Yorkshire? Yeah, or? I'm going to start tapering on Saturday. So I've got um, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. Four days of taper. Oh, there you go. Quick match. dream. Do you like doing a taper or is it just boring? I kind of like it because you've got a lot of time for uh, other things. So you don't have to go doing massive miles on the bike and you can just do other things. But you can't go out and have like 20 beers. You can't have 20 beers. Good, but it's not advisable before the tour of Yorkshire. <laughs> but uh, maybe 20 
flat whites. Save the beers for the tour series, yeah, mate. Yeah, that post tour series, mate. Post tour series. Okay. Yeah. Serious professional athletes, this. Don't fuck around. No swearing. You're a professional athlete, mate. Yeah, no swearing, of course. Yeah, I got to remember who I'm representing. <laughs> so great to ride with Robert. He's actually got a YouTube channel as well. I'll put the link down below for that. Just on my way now to a bike fit with James because IT band turned into a beautiful day. Missed you. How are you? Yeah, good brother. Very summery. I know, um, I've got all trousers. I'm indoors most of the day, locked away in my little dungeon. Good. Listen to Pink Floyd. Oh. Nothing's really changed. Graf, graf. New bike? New bike. One of two. It happens when you own a bike yeah, shop. Open, UP, uh, Altegra Di2, uh, Mavic Pro, Auro Pros. Mm, nice. Actually, sort of not really my bag usually, but I, I really rate them. It's so much fun. I like the town walls. Yeah, man. Well, they were free, they came off a bike. Although I have like these bikes that I don't really pay for, I do also put, cobble them together with bits that I find. <laughs> in the workshop, yeah. <laughs> like it's got a Cannondale stem on it at the moment. Oh, that's but horrible, I'm, that. But I'm, I'm, I'm sort of starting to practice what I preach um, on the whole reach front. That's much, much shorter than any other bike I think I've ever had. That's shorter than my other bike. Mm. I quite like it. Yeah, yeah. It handles better as well. <laughs> like, what, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Fun. I just did some of the off-road route to Brighton. We also saw 20 dogs at once. 20 dogs? Yeah. 20 Lawrences? Lawrence. This is, this is, this is a new arch port, arch port. And this is yours. <clears throat> I mean, the, the, this is it's kind of... Safe. Squash. This but, is all the best thing about G8 though, is that you can replenish the, the art support as and when you need to. You're here because you've got ITB pain. I am pretty convinced that this is the cause of it. We've got this <sighs> bike fit, as I like to call it, a windswept pedaling dynamic. So check the, the right knee comes in and the left knee comes out. Now, we've witnessed you doing this before and historically it hasn't caused you any issues. I'd sort of written it off as a, as a movement pattern, perhaps from your, your racing days. I don't want to raise your saddle height any higher because that's going to put additional strain through the IT band, which is a, it's a, it's a band of fascia down the side of your leg. And if I increase your saddle height, it's going to increase your leg extension, which is going to put even more strain through the IT band. Let's see how we go. We've bolstered your arch support in your shoes, which we've already found has been completely trashed. But the only other potential drivers for this could be, well, excessive saddle height, which I'm pretty sure it's not. Excessive reach. Which is not. Which is not. So it sort of leaves an asymmetrical human being as, a, as, the, as the lasting kind of result. I mean, it's interesting, you look at pressure mapping. You know, there's, there's more pressure on the left side than there is on the right. So there's an, there's an, there's an asymmetrical interaction with the, with the saddle. Christ, I don't want to be the, 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 the defeated bike fitter. Whatever changes you've made just then, don't get pain. Except this for the lung pain. is a 165mm crank. Short <laughs> crank. Tiny crank for tiny man. My, my rationale behind it is reduction in crank length generally will improve hip function more than anything else. It's simply put, it means you don't have to raise your knee so high to get over the top of the stroke. I think the fact of the matter is, we've made a change on the jig and the pain's diminished. It's gotten better. I mean, all the more reason to bike fit on a jig rather than you know, bike fit on a rider's bike. Uh, because you can't make this change on a rider's bike without obviously changing the component itself. I'm now trying to think of a way that we can test it in the real world. So we've discovered with your shoes that Secret thing. We, can get shoes. The, we can get the cleat further back if we move the tina. Um, the, see? Someone, someone on the internet will know what these red things are, but we're oh, taking them out. Yeah, goodbye. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, just, that's just a much easier way of doing it, rather yeah. than me sticking my hand inside your disgusting shoes. What do you do with these shoes, brother? Why would you want to move the cleat back? Stabilise the, the foot. Stabilise the foot, right? That's your foot, right? Where my wrist is, is the ankle joint, which is essentially the pivot point of the foot. Put a load at that end of this ruler, i.e. you pushing down on the pedals. It's going to put quite a lot of strain on my wrist, on the ankle joint, on the sub-table joint. As you move that weight further and further, closer and closer towards the ankle joint, essentially the length of the lever diminishes, gets smaller, right? So all of a sudden, I can take a lot more load through this wrist, mm. ankle joint, sub tailor joint, right? Now, you know, there's quite a lot of argument for having to take further forward because it improves leverage. That's true, but if you've got an individual that has shit feet or they don't have a lot of strength through their ankles, as a lot of people that I treat don't, 
um, then I would never put the cleat further forward to access more leverage in the, at the expense of angle stability. I personally tend to prefer slightly more rearward cleat location. There isn't really much harm to be had from having the cleat too far back. Having the cleat too far forward, knee pain, numb feet, hot foot, burning sensations in your feet, um, saddle issues, there's a very, very strong correlation with a certain shoe brand whose cleat location is too far forward, in my opinion, and the correlation is foot problems and knee pain. I've literally, I've had guys on this jig, they've been in pain in this brand of shoe, taken the shoe away, put a different shoe into, into the mix, pain disappears. So guys, foot pain, knee pain, if it, the knee pain in particular, if it's anterior, if it's over the top of the knees, could be cleats too far forward. What was, the, what was the point for? Point at you. Ouch. I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. Maybe. Right. Probably. <laughs>